it's on, right? I think so. So welcome to my next video, guys. This is the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 after the hype. Now, you guys know that I, I do these videos uh, for one reason. In a, in a few days or a couple days, or at least 24 hours at minimum, uh, this video is actually about 48 hours later, almost three days later. Uh, but I think, yeah, about 48. I was going to do it 24 hours later, but I really wanted to um, kind of get a feel for the device and, uh, you know, give, give you a little bit more than just 24 hours with it because I found out a lot uh, in the 24, in the 48 hours that I've been using it. So this is the Samsung Galaxy Note 7. So let, us, let me just give you a rundown of the specs again. Now, just my cheat sheet on my iPad Pro. Uh, for the techies out there or people who just want to know about what's inside this phone and what makes it tick. So it's a 5.7 inch Quad HD display. It is a gorgeous display, I will admit. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that display. Uh, I think Samsung makes some of the best displays, if not the best, uh, as far as AMOLED technology goes. It's really a stunning display. And I have a very uh, dim wallpaper. I have my J-Wheel wallpaper on there. You know how I do sometimes. I put those on there. Uh, but the display is actually really, really good. Coming in Quad HD, 1440 by 2560 on a 5.7 inch display is really, really solid. Uh, you will not be disappointed with this display. 12 megapixels on the back. Um, there were some discrepancies at first with my other Galaxy Note, my wife's Galaxy Note, uh, you know, defaulting to the, the SD card. Here's what happened with, when recording video. Um, and I'm just going to go down the list and this after the hype. I'll do it like that so I don't do a double run through. So the screen, I've already covered that. Now let's take a look at this 12 megapixel camera. So I'm going to shoot a photo here, um, and I'm going to take it. Uh, I'll take it from something over here, and that's going to go up live right now. Now let's do a front camera, and I'll put that up like I always do. So here's something about the camera. Now I don't have an SD card in this in mind. But there's an SD card in my wife's, it's the blue one, uh, which I initially started to do the review with, but you know, it just didn't work out. She didn't want to let it go, so I had to get my own. Um, the, the camera went in the settings, here's what I found what went wrong with a video comparison I did with the Moto Z. The, the phone was defaulted to uh, the SD card for saving. Now the SD card is a class 10 SD card and it's a high powered SD card, it's an ultra I think it is, or extreme, but for some reason the Galaxy Note 7 did not want to produce the video as it should. I, I, I shot that video that I did a while back, and maybe I'll put a link to the original one. There's two now. There's a rematch and then there's the original one. Maybe I'll put a link to those in the description so you can check them out and see what I mean. Um, but for some reason when I had it set to default to the SD card to record video, to store it, the videos did not produce well at all. And I shot that original video at least seven times. My wife was like, what are you doing? I said, I, I got to get this video out. I got to make sure it's right. And when you look at it and producing it, it looked okay. But once I put it online, I thought, you know what? I was going to put this on as is and let people see what this camera is about. Well, in all actuality, I think it was just because it was default defaulted to the SD card. Now, it could be that SD card. What I plan on doing is getting a Samsung SD card and trying it that way. Now, unfortunately, Samsung phones still don't have adoptable storage, and that is just not good. Um, the, the technology is there. Let us use it. Uh, don't make us buy 128 gig when we can just have a 64 gig and then put a 64 gig or 200 gig in there and then we've got the storage that we want for the device. Shout out to other OEMs that do that. They allow us to have the adoptable storage feature. I really appreciate that. Now, um, the cameras are actually good though. Once, once I took it away from being on the SD card, the camera, it, it drastically improved. And it was the weird part, it was just the rear camera. So does that mean what? I, I really don't know. The front camera produced a pretty good, uh, pretty good footage, but the rear camera did not. But after I did the retake and the rematch and I took it off the SD card, it, I'll admit it was solid. There was no frame drops, no, no stuttering, no nothing. And it performed very well. And a lot of people felt like the Note 7's camera was much better than the Moto Z. So... It has 4 gigs of RAM, and uh, I haven't had a problem. Actually, I um, salute uh, Samsung because I did a speed test uh, with my Beast over here. I really wish Samsung would have made a 6-inch um, phone. But I applaud Samsung for, let me take this case off. I applaud Samsung for squeezing a 5.7-inch screen in such a, a little body. Um, this is uh, 5.7 and 6 inches. Now, this is obviously a very wide phone. 
Uh, and this is a narrower phone. This has a curved display. This has a 2.5D arch curved display. So looking at these, 5.7 and 6 inches, doesn't seem like a lot, but this screen is, is just, it's gorgeous. It doesn't compare well to the Note 7 screen, obviously, uh, because this is 1080p IPS. However, this is a massive screen, so I did a speed test between these two, and the Note 7, to my surprise, now a lot of people felt that um, the Note 7 was going to have some problems. People requested that video, by the way, uh, you know, a battle against these two, because really what they were looking at was price, ratio, value, and, you know, honestly, this is a better buy, you know, this is just a better buy, there's no, uh, there's no getting around it. This is the better buy out of these two phones. This one costs, uh, mind you, we have two of these. Uh, and this was $920 and like 65 cents total. Uh, and this one was just a little over 100 with the taxes. So <clears throat> you kind of do the math uh, and, and for what this phone offers. I'm not going to get into I'll, I'm going to have a comparison against these because this is what people want. I'm not just doing these videos on the fly. People are requesting battles, and if I have time to do them, I will do them. Now, I will say, spoiler, this phone in no way can perform like this one. The camera footage is going to be much better on the Note 7. So A lot of things are going to be better on the Note 7 as far as what you see in the naked eye when I'm clicking on things. However, this is still the better buy because you can buy eight of these or nine of these for the cost of this, and you can pretty much get the same day-to-day -day performance. Now, <clears throat> getting back to the RAM... I think Samsung has fixed the RAM management. I really do. Um, they have really taken care of that because I did that speed test and um, this actually did it in 1 minute and 30 seconds I think it was and that phone did it in 2 minutes and 13 seconds. Uh, although when you crank the phone up and you let it settle, this is how you can find out what's actually available on your phone after you've got all your applications installed. You start the phone up, don't touch it, don't do anything. After it's idle for a second or so, about 30 seconds at least, go into your memory and you'll see how much is available. And this phone had, I think, 1.7 available or something like that. So even though it has 4 gigs of RAM, only 1. Point, uh, only 1.7 is available. Now on the OnePlus 3, it has 6 gigs of RAM and 4.5 of that is available. So it's kind of the, you know, you get the same kind of ratio almost. Uh, the more RAM, the more you get available, the better it's going to run. Uh, and, and I think they probably fixed that because in that speed test, it actually paused the, the games in the background. And I was kind of surprised at that. So I was kind of happy. And that makes me like this phone even better. So look for a OnePlus 3 comparison with these two. Some people have been requesting that. But again, I do have a life outside of YouTube and I can't always give you every video that you request in the comments. Uh, but look for a battle. Uh, between the Note 7 and the OnePlus 3. I think that's going to be a fantastic battle. And I've got a surprise for you guys on that as well. So we shall see that. Now, uh, another area that concerned me, and I, I wanted to... Now, if you guys don't know, I don't, I don't leave my phone on the charger overnight. I only charge my phone when it's actually needing to be charged. So I can get the right angle. It's at 21%. So I took some screenshots of my first battery drain. This is my concern because the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge has a 3600 milliamp hour battery and um, this has a 3500 milliamp hour battery. Here's my concern though. So if you can see there, on the first battery drain I got 20 hours and uh, the screen on time was 5 hours and two minutes and that's at about two percent left so that was with full HD and I'll get into I'm gonna I'm actually gonna work on a video I'm actually, it might be up right now I don't know uh, I've got a video explaining Samsung's current ultra power saving mode it's actually very it's, it's fantastic it's a great idea now but currently right now I'm in the mid power saving mode so now let me show you my real time because I'm at 20 percent I don't charge my phones if they don't need charging and when I charge them, I leave them alone. I don't use them. Uh, so I'm going to let this get, do its thing, and then I'm going to go to the battery, and I want to show you where I'm at right now. So I didn't hit, I didn't hit anything. I just let it sit as is. I'm not going to optimize. And I'm going to go to battery. And as you can see here, I'm in the mid-range. See, I've, I've been on this. On my second charge, I, on the first charge, I did regular, full-blown everything. 
on the the second charge I'm doing the mid range to see where I can get so I'm gonna click on battery usage and currently right now I'm at 20 hours of screen on time it says I have 4.4 hours and 5, 50 minutes left now let's check my screen on time because I haven't checked this and so I'm at 4 hours and 36 minutes as you see I got 20, 21% left now what does this mean this means that um, Samsung has, is, is doing a very good thing with their new battery optimization thing here. And, but those can vary because I know people who probably don't use the, um, the mid power range mode, the battery saving mode. What that does, it kicks it down to 1080p for the screen resolution permanently and it turns off some functionality. But what I did, I just kind of just use it as is and just let it go the way it is on that range. I didn't adjust anything. but. It kicks it down to 10, 1080p for the screen resolution. That's the highest it'll produce. And then uh, it gives you some other battery saving things in the background. <clears throat> so with the full blown quad HD display, no battery saver, I got five hours. Uh, that, was from a zero, that was from 100 to 2%. I got five hours and uh, whatever it was said a second ago, five hours and two minutes or something. I don't know what it was. but uh, And now I'm at four hours and like 30 minutes basically. And I still have 21% left. So how much battery will I actually gain on this? So I'll probably actually get another hour or so of screen on time. Uh, of that, it says four hours and 50 minutes, but the most I'll be able to get probably is another hour and a half. And that'll probably kick it up to six hours of screen on time. So it makes you wonder, you know, is it really worth turning on the, the power saving mode? But next, after that, I'm gonna test the ultra power saving mode. Now these are very difficult to do because with the ultra power saving mode, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> you, with the ultra power saving mode as a matter of fact I'm just going to go ahead and say check out the video that I have for the battery saving modes on this phone because I'm explaining it to you now but I want you to see it up close and I'll do a screen record for that but with the ultra power saving mode I'm going to be really limited I mean extremely limited so uh, I don't know how I'm going to make it f with that for a full 24 hours but I'm going to do it it's just a matter of testing the phone out I'm testing it to its limit. Some probably people probably can't do that. They believe in ultra saving mode, but uh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna. I got this phone to give you all that I could give you from it. You know how I do when I get a phone. I try to give you every requested video that you want. So battery um, is 3,500, and and actually, I'm not that impressed with this battery for it to have 3,500 milliamps because the Galaxy S7 Edge has 3,600 milliamps. And I got a lot of battery out of that phone. Uh, but this phone has a little bit more features as far as... The only thing it has different is the S Pen. It has a little bit bigger screen. It's got the iris scanner. You know, it's got a few things that makes it what it is. So it's it's difficult to say why this phone doesn't is not getting the same battery usage that I'm getting on the S7 Edge. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but what I will tell you is, it's, it's a little dis. It's now let me let me just be clear on something. That's great battery for what this phone is giving you. That's fantastic battery. Five hours of screen on time without trying. Um, yeah, you know that that's actually really good. Uh, shout out to Richard over at the Samsung Nights. He gave me a lot of battery tips back in the day, and I haven't even applied them yet. The only thing I've done is install my. If you have a Samsung product. Uh, shout out to Lauren, this guy on, on, on Google Plus. He he told me about the package disabler a long time ago when I purchased it a long time ago. That's the excuse me, that's the only thing I have on here is the Samsung package disabler. And I don't even have everything disabled. I just checked through the things that I wanted to check off. Uh, that's the only modification I've done to the phone as far as trying to get the phone to perform better. But that battery life for five hours of screen on time, that's actually fantastic for a phone like this because this is a very high powered phone. And getting that kind of battery life is great. I, I definitely recommend that you pick it up if you're if you're concerned about battery. Don't really be concerned. But for me, it's a little disappointing because I'm able to squeeze a heck of a lot more out of other phones that are pretty much the same. I mainly the S7 Edge. I pulled down some serious battery time. <clears throat> so I don't know. Um, the phone is water resistant. Uh, this is this, this is a beautiful. I mean. This one is beautiful, guys. This, this is how, how thin it is. I think it's like 7.9. Yeah, 7.9. I like that they've made it narrower. That that just makes for a great looking Galaxy Note. I hate that we sold our our 64 gig fives because I actually had one too. Um, but you know, 
it is what it is. This phone has 64 gigs on board memory. I don't have, I have maybe, I haven't loaded any music up yet, but I think I will after this. Uh, but um, 64 gigs and an SD card is more than enough from the for the average consumer. I've actually heard average consumers in the store when I'm purchasing saying, I don't need 128 gigs, I don't need 64, I just need 16. Uh, but luckily with this phone, uh, well not luckily because I don't even luck, but fortunately for this phone, you're getting 64 gigs period and you're getting an SD card. So that's a good thing. So um, other than all that techie stuff, you know, just day-to-day -day usage, the phone charges really fast. It has USB Type-C and <clears throat> it charges pretty fast. I can go from 2% to 100 in probably an hour and five minutes maybe. That's actually really fast. That's not as fast as dash charging. <clears throat> maybe an hour and 15 maybe. Uh, but that is really fast to charge this phone. Um, another phone that I have that charges fast that doesn't have fast charging is my BlackBerry Passport Silver Edition. This thing charges like super fast, man. I don't know what it's about. So let's talk about the some features of the phone that I called gimmicky at one point. Um, and I, I still say that some things are just kind of, I guess I would call them, they're, they're like bonuses. If you don't have a microfiber cleaning cloth, get a good one when you do. And this is a, a microfiber cleaning cloth. It's, it's good. It's almost like a, a dishcloth. You know, <laughs> it, it shines up the phones very, very well. I don't really care about fingerprints on the back of the phone. That's a gripe that a lot of people take it way too serious. But I want to show you something. So here's a, let me see if I can catch myself doing this. Am I in view? I don't think so. I don't know. I'm just going to try this out. Oh, I can see my reflection. All right, cool. So this is sweet. I can see my reflection. So what I'm going to do is, you see I have my glasses on. The iris scanner actually works with glasses. So I'm going to light it up here. And it works. Let me see if I can get in view a little bit better. Yep, there we go. Now I'm going to lock it. It's locked. This iris scanner technology. I said it was gimmicky. And the reason I say it's gimmicky is because I forget to use it. It's not something that I'm excited about on the phone. Uh, but, you know, reality check. Reality, it is what it is. The, the iris scanner is a cool feature if I can remember to use it. I'm so used to just putting my hand on there and then locking it with my finger. Now, I, I kind of time, timed it, and the iris scanner, it is faster to unlock the device than the fingerprint reader, but it, it appears that it's not because the fingerprint reader, you're not really timing yourself when you press the button and, and you hold it there for a second. But when you press the button and swipe up, the iris scanner is, is super fast. It unlocks the phone within a second. The fingerprint reader is about 1.5 seconds or so. Um, and you're probably saying, really, Jay? Uh, yeah, really. But the iris scanner, to me, you know, it's not something that I would see myself using very often. If only, if, if only I could just do this, that would be sweet. But we can't do that yet. So... I wonder if that's something that can be in, um, now this isn't the first iteration of an iris scanner, obviously, but I wonder if that's something that they can take care of in a software update. That would be innovation, guys. Having to unlock your phone or being able to unlock your phone with just, just looking at it, that would be sweet. I would really be excited about that. Um, but um, after the hype for the Samsung Galaxy Note 7, man, day-to-day -day use, I'll be honest, I haven't had any I haven't had any issues with this phone. None. There's absolutely been nothing going wrong with this phone. I haven't had any crashes. There was a little bit of lag. Somebody said lag whiz. <laughs> that was funny. Um, I actually keep it uh, in this oblique case as well. If you guys have not picked up uh, any of the oblique cases, it's 30% off with my code JW Tech. I'll put a link to that video in this description as well, if I can remember. But if I don't remember, shoot me a comment and say, hey, Jay, where's the link to the oblique so I can get the discount? On Amazon, these are back order for like a month or two. But if you go directly to the OEM with my code, JW Tech, I don't make any money, by the way. They just gave me that to promote, help promote, you know. I wish they would pay me some money. That would be fantastic. But they give me free cases. So, whatever. But you can use my code, JW Tech, and you can get oblique cases for 30% off. 
that's a huge deal and they're shipping really fast right now and you only have until october 3rd excuse me august 31st and the discount goes away so jump on it when you can uh, this is actually my favorite case right now the oblique slim metal this is hot man because it doesn't add anything to the phone pretty much and you still get a lip up here and here and the curve on the phone on the sides is minimal at best it's really good that's been my case of choice uh, for the Note 7 and I have a lot of cases I'm working on a, a video called uh, right now it's tentative called um, Black, uh, Black Bear, oh gosh Samsung Galaxy Note 7 Case Frenzy and um, Frenzy, not friendly, Frenzy because I have out of view here probably at least 10, 15, 20 cases maybe for the Galaxy Note 7 and when I say frenzy, I'm going to be giving away a lot of stuff for the Galaxy Note 7. I don't, I don't need all these cases, so I'm going to share them. You know how I get down. So look for, look for flash giveaways on Twitter or Google+. Plus. I'll do flash giveaways on Google+, Plus this time, because uh, you get to type more on Google+, Plus and I can see the history all in one. Unlike Twitter, i got to go search for the winners and stuff like that. So look for that next week or by the end of the next week, that video on that. I... I'm going to have so many cases to give away for the Note 7. Uh, these are all cases that I got myself. Uh, and it's just another way. This is a hot item right now. A lot of people have this phone. Uh, but they might not have a case for it. I'll even probably throw in some screen protectors. I don't know. Uh, but as you can see here, I'm rocking mine raw right now. I do have a tempered glass set to come. But when I get that tempered glass, I, glass, I won't be able to use cases. So that's why I kind of use the oblique case there. Because I actually like how beautiful the screen is. Now... Finalizing this video, I went through a little bit of things with you and my experiences thus far. I did experience a little bit of lag every now and then, uh, but I don't know. That could be an application. That could be anything because it's not happening regularly. Um, but I would say that Samsung did a great job optimizing this battery. Uh, excuse me, the, um, the uh, system itself, their RAM. I'm pretty sure they fixed that RAM management. And I, I hope and pray that we get a different variant of this with 6 gigs and an Exynos processor so we can purchase that soon. So I'm, you know, I've kind of gripped about the 920 bucks, but I got my money saved for the Exynos version. If it's within reason and I can get rid of this, I'll try out the Exynos version because she's not going to get rid of that blue one. That blue one is hot to her. A lot of people like the blue one. Shout out to the, to the blue uh, Galaxy Note Club. I'm a part of the black Galaxy Note Club. There's a titanium Galaxy Note Club. All you guys, if you're in the Note Club, it is what it is. Uh, but uh, shout out to you guys, man. Uh, this is after the hype for the Galaxy Note 7. And I did it a little different. I kind of ran through things and pointed them out as I went along, which is I thought it would be easier to do. But I always make these videos after the hype because a lot of reviewers out there, you'll see a review and then you'll never hear about that phone again. And um, they just kind of move on to the next one. So I try to put out at least 5 to 10 videos on each phone. Even if they're just short videos, it's things that you guys are requesting. So um, I'm going to uh, be sure to check out the videos in the links of this description and um, also check out the run through of the Samsung power saving mode video that hopefully is up by now. If not, check the link in the description or check my channel out and you'll find it somewhere, hopefully. It's your man J. Will. After the hype with the Galaxy Note 7, uh, I think I'm still hyped. I'm still a little bit hyped. Note 7. Yeah, I'm hyped. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.